what's the difference, Apollonia, between neediness and codependency and so on. So I want to break that down for you and kind of give you a real inside um, self-coaching basically video of really to figure out of if you're codependency and if this rings a bell, I'm going to give you steps on how to push forward and ring and, and be through this. Let's get into a little bit about um, codependency, okay? So I want you to think of codependency as it feels like an addiction, okay? A lot of us do things in life to numb. A lot of us can do things in life to numb as far as we hear it a lot. We can numb with drugs. We can numb with alcohol. But a lot of times we can also numb with loving relationships, a relationship and love and addicted to relationships and dating can also be a numbing process, just like online dating can be a numbing process because you're constantly looking for that gratification. Codependency is often an emotional and behavioral condition that indicates basically that a feeling of I'm afraid to have a healthy relationship with myself or have a satisfying relationship. So we have an idea that love or relationships or women in general um, that come to you are always drastic, devastating. You see yourself not being your best person. So you're, you can get confused because oftentimes you look at yourself and you're like, well, I'm powerful in work. And this is what happens a lot with my clients. I'm powerful in my job. I'm very successful. I'm good in school. I'm good in all areas of my life. I have great friendships. But yet when it comes to relationships, Apollonia, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I've become this other person. So what happens is you end up not trusting yourself. And when you don't trust yourself, you go into these frustrating, destruct, uh, destructive excuse me, patterns in regards to how you show up for yourself in relationship. So codependency is often described as a need or an addiction, right? Um, maybe you make unhealthy choices, and I'm going to go into signs of this, but I want to clarify what codependency is a little bit more um, on a, a, a level where we can understand it because we are doing this daily in our relationships. So a level where our partner becomes an addiction, where we have these unha we have these unhealthy choices that tend to basically take us away from our authentic behavior um, and, and encourage us to show up in a different way where we feel like we're in a state of overwhelm all the time in our relationship. And we start to slowly give our power away to another individual in this relationship. Sometimes we will get into codependency relationships that are often one-sided abusive relationships, emotional abusive relationship, physical abusive relationships as well. Um, and have a lot of, uh, we attract a lot of gaslighting. We attract a lot of love bombing. We attract a lot of narcissism as well. And so typically when we become codependent in relationships, the reason why we, we can attract these type of relationships as far as especially love bombing is because when you're codependent, you question your reality of how you show up in a relationship because you don't trust yourself yet. And this is where we have to work through that. And so when we question it, when someone loves bombas, meaning they come in and they show us so much love and appreciation and they're like, you're like, this is too good to be true because this happens to everybody. It's not like, oh, he's not a strong man because he's not. Well, listen, a lot of men that I work with are very successful men and they're very independent and they have a great thing going. They've built their own homes. They have a family. They drive nice cars, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to say. They have the strength. They have that strength in them where they're able to accomplish things. But when it comes into their personal relationships with women is when they start to self-destruct. Okay. And this is part of a codependency and we falling for these love bombing relationships. And typically when we fall love bombing relationships, it happens so much with codependent men and women too. And this is because we don't feel a hundred percent authentic of how we show up in love. So listen, if you don't feel a hundred percent authentic of how you show up in love, when someone comes in, and validates that for you and says, I love you. You're the most amazing man I've ever met. And this is too good to be true. I want to have a family with you. I want to be married with you. And then the intimacy is amazing. And then you're like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Like, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this is the one, Apollonia. And then all of a sudden that love bombing starts to fall away. And you're like questioning your own reality, questioning yourself. 
This is why we stand, we st we tend to uh, fall into uh, codependent relationships as well. It's because when we don't have trust, we will initially fall for whatever lands in our lap that feels good because we lack boundaries, we lack standards, and we sometimes lack values, okay? So let's get into some signs, guys, about codependency behavior. And as I go through these signs, I want you to comment below on what signs that really stick out to you. Even if it's more than one, I want you to continue to comment because I want you to be able to call out what you see within yourself. Okay. So signs of a codependency can oftentimes feel like you need to be needed. Like you're doing everything for this person um, who should honestly be independent because we're all grown adults. So basically what you're doing is like, you're trying to make her um, life better. Um, I, you're also noticing that she's not over an ex. And so what you're trying to do is trying to prove that you're the best man possible for her. So you step into this prove mentality or you see her struggling in life because she just got out of a divorce and you're trying to pay her bills or you see her struggling in life and you're like, well, I used to be there one day too. I know what that's like. And you have empathy for that person, but the empathy is also with a motive of, but I want to be with her. So if I convince her that I'm a good man, keyword, convince her that I'm a good man. And I show her keyword show, convince and show, then she'll finally love me. We should never have to convince someone to be with you. All we have to do is show up with integrity and not prove that we are needing to be in this relationship. So one of the things that happens is we try, especially with high people that have come from hurt and pain and stuff in life, we can fall into this trap very easily when we see someone else there because we know what it's like to be there. But it is okay to be there for people as friends. But if you have a an, an ulterior motive to be in a relationship so with someone, you are not to give them all of yourself in order for them to heal. They have to come to that conclusion themselves, right? Um, because most of the time when we get here, we have a sense of meaning. Sometimes we feel like we have a sense of meaning in these relationships because I can support this person's growth. I can support this person financially, right? And so this is really, really important. Another thing is um, a reason why we're sometimes codependent is because we were abandoned when we were young by a mother or a father, right? So, um, you know, as a child, we have to have loving relationships with our parents. I say this in all of my sessions with clients is I break some things down in general. I'm not going to dive in too much, but I want you to think about it. Your first romantic relationships are actually with your parents, guys. Okay. Now with women, it becomes more romantic and intimate. Of course, the loves are different, but your first romantic relationships blend you for your future romantic relationships as well. The only difference is the love becomes more intense and it's more intimate and it's not this caring type of parenting love, I should say, right? So our first relationships with our parents often mold us. So if we struggle with not being seen as a child, or we feel like we have been abandoned, what's going to happen is we're going to neglect ourselves in our adult relationships because sometimes we haven't healed from that. And like Marissa Pierce says that I've, I've interviewed that I love so much, she says a lot of people are out there trying to rewrite their ending instead of fixing their new beginning. Let me repeat that. Many people are out there trying to rewrite their ending instead of fixing their new beginning. Okay. So oftentimes when we get in codependency relationships, the next sign is like you start neglecting your responsibilities, your hobbies, your goals, your missions, and you start putting her first many times. And so when this happens, we start putting these people first and this woman first, we just don't understand what to do moving forward because we also lose a part of ourselves. And this is something that is huge in codependent relationships because it's one thing to be happy and elated and fun when you start dating someone new. But when we're losing a sense of ourselves, this becomes a huge, huge neglect. Okay. Um, and then another part of codependency behaviors is you're hiding your issues. So maybe you are in an emotional abusive relationship and you start hiding those issues from parents. You start hiding them from friends and family and you start actually uh, digress, digressing from these relationships that you're in. And so because you start digressing from these relationships that you're in, what's happening is you're just saying no more. I don't want to talk to them because I know this is secretly and subconsciously you're saying, this is not a good thing for me. So I know everybody's going to say something, they're going to judge me. And so instead what you do is you take back that relationship with your parents or your friends and you see them less and you see them less and you see them less. And then you just feel like you're drowning. 
when we get into unhealthy relationships, we notice that we are enabling our other partner's behavior. So um, let's say that um, your partner is talking about dating other men and you guys aren't on that level or I don't know, saying something that's just very disrespectful and you make excuses for it. So you're not allowing your partner basically to take responsibilities and you're not allowing yourself. So your voice is diminished. So you start, you start neglecting yourself and your needs. You start neglecting your self-care. You start neglecting your work. You start neglecting your relationship with yourself and et cetera. So another thing too, um, you, what we, what we tend to do and when we tend to get to codependent is we start to think that these people, this relationship in our life is something we need. Okay. And then we start thinking that everything that I've done in this relationship is because of my behaviors. Okay. And so we start saying this because we can control it. If we, and we don't project it and say, no, this is my partner's fault. This is where I got here. We don't look at this as a partnership. And so one of the things that happens here is you have to remember that subconsciously what will happen to a lot of people when they're in uh, codependent relationships is they will take blame for it. Well, you know, I did this and well, you know, Apollonia, this is what happened because I did it. And yeah, I wasn't really great in the beginning, but then she did this and then she did this and maybe I deserved it. Right. And so what happens in why we do this is because if I can control it and if it's my fault, then I can fix it. Make sense. So if I can fix it, I can still be this, this person because all I see in this relationship is she's the one and it's end all be on because I'm codependent. And in order to release this, in order to get clear of this, guys, is where we also have to chime in and say, what do I need to change in my life? What work do I need to do to release these unhealthy attachments to possibly not the best woman for me and also show up better for myself in my life? All right, guys, much love to you. Um, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. Um, much love to all of you. If this is your first time visiting, I welcome you to subscribe and also to comment below. Bye guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day.